and uh, one advocate that we dedicated to the County Public Service Board because we had uh, so many employment matters arising. So we thought it could serve from within so that other than giving legal services advice to the County Public Service Board, it could also be in a position to represent the county in litigation in the law courts. It's only recently, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we have been able to hire the county solicitor. And as uh, the administration, we have liaised with the office of the governor, who is uh, receptive, that we fully operationalize the office of county attorney by hiring more legal counsel to assist in handling the workload that is uh, overwhelming to the available staff. Now, you have not addressed the numbers. You have talked of jurisprudence, but not the numbers. Here we deal with numbers. Is it true that you've got 417 farms? The pre-qualified farms are 23 as at the time of audit. Auditor General, from that is in oh, terms oh, of legal oh, fees. I want to clarify. From, from your obs observation, does the 417 still apply? Uh, Chair, the 417 still stands. And uh, I will ask management to look at these legal cases, both within the after devaluation the and the before devaluation, the because they are all still they, they adopted the assets and liabilities of the defunct law authorities. So when you look at it, it is still the hour for 17. 23, 23 they are talking of, it is the legal firms that are after the evolution. Maybe through the chair, uh, the, the, the county attorney is saying that there are three pre-qualified. Uh, you are talking about 417. So and the, your observation, OAG, you said the law firms were, there was a direct uh, direct procurement of the legal services. Was there any evidence of the same to point out that they were direct procurement? Because I had the county attorney talk about, the, of course, the inherited cases from defunct and municipal councils within Nakuru County. So, and they have said 23 are pre-qualified. So it means for 414, for 417 less 3, that's 414, were not pre-qualified, uh, and therefore it was a direct procurement. What made you arrive to the to the position that one, they were 417 law firms, number two, uh, whether there was a direct procurement as you have observed? Uh, Chair, uh, the 417 comes from the figure of uh, outstanding legal fees of 439. When you get the farms that are asking for this money, there are only 417 farms. Uh, through the chair, did you, were you able to see the list of these law farms that uh, the county government of Nakuru owes them? Yes, we, have, we had a list. Maybe uh -huh. give me time, I will uh, send it. Produce the list. Are the independent bills a register? The accounts payable uh, register that's supposed to be annexed? It's supposed to be annexed as legal fee. Yes, they have some. Is here? Do they have all of them, or it's not all, not all of them? Not all of them. Mm. Senator Dulo? Chair, Ch maybe before the Senator Dulo comes, I think uh, just my old recommendation to the committee is that uh, we might need to meet this, uh, to, to know these law firms at 417, because being owed around 500 million, 439 is a lot of money. So we need to get the list and then know why are they being owed by to the county government of Nakuru and the others are historical and others are, are, are latest. I think if we can get the list, it will allow us to have a better view of why is uh, who being owed and which law firms are this. And I think we can uh, get the list within the timelines that we had given for the contingent liabilities. Yeah. Senator Dulo. No, Chair, I just wanted to ask the county whether they have the list of the historical cases vis-a-vis -vis the current so that you can be able to know who you owe and how much. And is it appearing in your pending bills? Because uh, that is also very important. Uh, and I, I think you are doing some consultation. Now, I think it is also important for the historical cases 
whether they are genuine or not. Because if they are not genuine, you can actually verify and kick them off uh, than carrying them along and they become a burden to you for uh, some time. Yes, Governor. Sure. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, we do have a list of uh, the cases, and we would be able to separate and show which are from before devolution and which are after, uh, and we shall be able to provide that within the timelines uh, gu guided by Chair. Um, I really, I am not, uh, I'm not disagreeing with the director here, but, but I don't see how we, we don't have 400 and something. We just have 23. However, I would also want to see that list also myself because the one we have just shows 23 law firms and it's adding up to the same amount of money. So I think there may be some confusion between ourselves and we should hopefully be able to handle that. The, um, the, the number of firms is alarming, but not as alarming as the amount owed. Sure. I think the bigger thing sure. is the amount owed, sure. where there seems to be agreement. Concurrence. And, and, and uh, maybe uh, as you wind up your submission because of time, okay. we'll also look at the audit query on unpaid court awards so that we tie them together. Yeah, just proceed. Sure, I was just finishing to say to Senator Dulo's question, yes, we carry them as pending bills, so we don't leave them out, and as we split whatever we have in the port for pending bills, we make sure that we are also handling the lawyers so that the interests uh, don't keep adding up. Thank you. So we'll be able to get a report that shows us how we move from 1.3 billion to 439 million to the current 365 million. Um, I think, and, and then maybe just a schedule of the firms that are owed so that we are able to deal with the 417 uh, 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 matter, yeah? Uh, I think that needs to come to us within 30 days to enable us to do a report. We are chair and evidence of the same that we have reduced the figures to that much. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and this is not idle because, you see, your biggest uh, um, revenue stream, your second largest revenue stream is property tax and, and uh, business permits. And it's about 360 million. So whatever you're collecting from, uh, on business permits is going to pay advocates. Whatever you're collecting on property tax is going to pay advocates. That's you know, how you visualize it. And uh, I know that the devolution committee is looking at a similar matter on engagement of external lawyers, which I, I think that counties have made submissions, but uh, the, the figures here are alarming, but also the non-disclosure of contingent liabilities is a matter of concern. Even you as a governor, you should know, and the public should know. Now, let's come to these unpaid court awards. Auditor General, has this been settled? Not yet. It's still outstanding? Yes. Okay, can you read it? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. This is paragraph number 32, under the same section of rawfulness and effective use of public resources, uh, unpaid court awards. Review of documents provided for audit revealed that the Chief Magistrate's Court in Nakuru, civil case, civil suit number 2728 of 2003, ordered the county executive to pay Kenya shillings 5 million to the plaintiff for their uh, rightful retirement benefits payable as of 31st December 2002, and the, all the plaintiff's gross salary per month, uh, commencing 1st January 2023. However, the order was not honored and the county executive has since accrued extra penalties on the unpaid amount of amounting to 39,614,552. No explanation has been provided for failure to pay the amount awarded by the court. Uh, in, uh, in the circumstance, the court award continues to attract penalties and interest which are avoided which are avoidable costs and does not realize value for money, uh, realize value for money. Chair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Governor, please proceed. Uh, oh, thank because, you. Because of time, I'll guide you as follows. Okay. If in your written responses the substance and background is there, okay. you can skip that in your submission. But just tell us, this 5 million that has grown to 39 million, mm -hmm. has it been settled? And if not, why? 
or Hon Chair, we wish to state that it is apparent that the figure of 39,614,552 captured by the Office of the Attorney General is erroneous, erroneous, as it was a summation of all decrees issued by the court since October 20, 2014. However, when a decree is issued, the previous one becomes now as the amount in the previous attracts interest. Therefore, the final decree of Nakuru Chief Magistrates Court Civil case number 2728 of 2003 has been paid in full settlement as per the schedule of payment attached in the total sum of 12,134,477.25. And subsequently, the county does not have any pending legal bill with the firm, Appendix 32.1. Uh, the delay in payments of the above may have been occasioned by lack of sufficient budgetary allocation to cater for payment of the uh, decree amount and related costs against the county. Going forward in the subsequent years, the county will ensure uh, ensure decree to amounts are paid promptly and avoid further interest on the same. When was this 12 million paid? When was the last uh, uh, payment totaling to the 12,134? Shortly, Chair. Yeah, because uh, if this was the explanation and it was mm. provided to the Auditor General, we would have been dealing with 64 issues and not 65. That's true. Auditor General, as I get that commitment, uh, do you agree with their argument that um, the actual ought to be 12 million and not the 39 million? As at the time we are auditing chair, the interest had accrued to 39 million. And you presented the county with this report? Yes. And they did nothing? They have not provided information. County attorney, you are the county attorney then. Maybe, maybe we, we, we met in Meru in the last government. Why didn't you provide this explanation to the Auditor General? Maybe, may I know maybe before? Yeah, the... yeah, just a minute. Why okay. did you? Because why are you wasting time on a matter I... that sounds so straightforward, uh, surely? Okay, uh, proceed. Mr. Chairman, we did provide the information through our accounting officer. But if there is a discrepancy, we can still provide a copy of the schedule of payments and even a letter from the firm of advocates that was handling the matter on behalf of those employees. So you are making as auditors a job that should have been done in Nakuru, Centre Methu, sorry. Maybe, Chair, I want, because there are, uh, there are two positions that have been taken. In this response, um, the county executive says that this that 9 million is a summation of all the decrees that have been made since 2014. But uh, from the explanation of the Auditor General, it looks like that, that 9 million is the interest uh, that had accrued since this matter had not been settled. Chair, uh, if I can answer. Through the, the management response, they have said that it is, there was a delay in payment of this award. And that the delay had attracted interest. And so how much was the original award? Uh, the original award was 12 million, uh, was 5 million. Mm. Which was five grew million. to that 9 million? Yes, which grew to that 9 million because of non payment. Is that the position, Governor? Let him explain. Uh, uh, it can help you to clarify. Attorney. Legal attorney, you can explain. Yeah, th thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The calculation of uh, 39 million, we cannot get it from our files. The firm of advocates that represented those employees is the firm of, uh, if, with your permission, I can, I can mention the firm, Mr. Chairman. Karanjambo Karan and Company Advocates acted for those employees. And the decree was for a sum of 5 million shillings. This is one of the historical debts that was inherited by the county government. Uh, and no budgetary provisions had been Maybe made you previously. need to give a, 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 a more straightforward answer. Is yes. it 5 million that agreed to that 9 million? No, 5 million was the decreed amount. Yes. The interest accrued was about 7 million. The total amount that was paid is 12 million. And we have provided a schedule. And when was, when was it paid? I can I can give the dates. When was the last uh, dis uh, disbursement? The, the last disbursement. The, the last disbursement, Mr. Chairman, 
was made on 23rd of June 2022. Let, let me add, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, in your submission at the time of audit, the entire amount had been paid? The entire amount had been paid in full and final settlement of the decree. And do you understand why we feel frustrated that if you had that information in the county, you should have provided it to the Auditor General? Because then we are, we, whatever we are doing here is an exercise in futility. I would not uh, ignore the auditor's observation because he's got a constitutional mandate and he gives you the opportunity through a management letter. He even gives you a draft report. You are able to see how the report is going to look like for you to take action. So uh, this one, even if you are blaming transition, but uh, we must find uh, who, who was a chief, who was a, who was a accounting officer that had this information. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, by then the office of county attorney did not have an accounting office on its own because of a, a lack of operationalization. So the figures were actually paid through uh, pending pills monies that had been allocated. So the, the monies were paid either from the public service uh, and devolution department or the department of finance. Now, Auditor General, we are being presented by two sets of uh, um, uh, information, well, uh, it can't be, facts uh, should not be, um, yeah, two, two, two arguments. That the amount was 12, not 39, and it has been paid, uh, it's not outstanding. Uh, if you are not satisfied, there's no way they can satisfy us, satisfy us as, as a Senate. What is the final position on this? The final position, Chair, is that we have to verify those payments. Where we start is from that file. When the case was awarded, how interest was accumulating, and there was correspondence from the law firm, how interest had accumulated to 39. So if they had settled on any other figure other than 39, then we need to see that settlement, uh, the agreement, and even that payment, that is the final payment, and the law firm will not uh, ask you for the balance that is... Now, I want you to go and look at that and give us a recommendation. In the Public Audit Act, it empowers you, the Auditor General, to make a recommendation where there's been loss of public funds to propose a surcharge. It's there in the Public Audit Act. You've got that power to make a recommendation for a surcharge. If indeed, because if the bill ought to have been paid in 2002, 5 million, the argument of lack of funds cannot arise because 5 million out of 16 billion budget is a drop in the ocean. These are some of the cases where we must give you the power that you have in the Public Audit Act to identify and to define and, and to propose a recommendation leading to surcharge of officers. I think that's when uh, uh, we'll take this thing seriously. So we'll, we'll await your advice because there's no way I'm going to take the submission of uh, the county attorney without any evidence on record. And you cannot table evidence at this point in time. It ought to have been circulated to the Auditor General. So uh, this is a, an, a frustrating exercise because somewhere along the line, uh, people in the county failed to do what was right. I think on legal fees, uh, there are those two directions, contingent liabilities and the list, the schedule of uh, amounts owed uh, should be submitted to the Office of the Auditor General, copy to the Clerk of the Senate in 30 days' time, and we shall also include them in the list of those counties where we might want to do a public inquiry on, uh, on legal expenses alongside Nairobi, alongside, um, uh, I think there are a few counties that we had uh, profiled because this is material. I want us to come back then to the, where we started from. At least you have dealt with the legal issues, all the cross-cutting issues. Senator Dulo. Uh, Chair, I just wanted to advise Governor, when you have audit queries, it's important to bring on board all the relevant departments. Because right now, you see your legal uh, attorney has not given you facts on those issues. But if he has sat in the meeting, he will be able to respond to those things and they are clarified. Uh, properly. So when there are audit queries, bring on board the relevant department so that they can assist you and also brief you on what is uh, the query about. Thank you. Chair, Chair, just an observation, Governor, and your team, 
and I hope CCM Finance and CEO are here. I, I didn't hear, I, I know they are there. Is some of these audit queries is lack of provision of documentation, violating section 65 of the Public Audit Act. So if some of the documentation like on the uh, court awards and others had been provided, this audit query would have been sorted at that level. So I hope your team is taking this issue seriously because if most of these issues, documents have been just been provided, this matter would still be escalated to this level. So I hope uh, that guides uh, properly to your team so that when the audit of this financial year is done, make sure they provide each and every document. It doesn't make sense to appear before Senate and tell us the documentation are already here with us. Kindly provide to the Office of the Auditor General. Then we can just be, we, by now we should be discussing policy issues and what Senate can do for counties. I thank you, Chair. I share in the observation of both Senator Dulo and Senator Chirake. Let's go back to the um, uh, beginning of that report. So we were done with the inaccuracies of financial statements which gave birth to the conversation on legal expenses. Auditor General, issue number two, payments after the financial year end. This is a bookkeeping, it's a bookkeeping issue. So it's guilty as charged, but maybe corrective measures in future. We shall take the written responses. Inaccuracies in other receipts, we have spent a lot of time uh, on the receiver of revenue report. Does that address the issues raised here? Fine. Let's proceed to unsupported expenditure on use of goods and services. And this is, this is a most frustrating audit finding coming from counties. If expenditure was not supported at the time of audit, there is no way that expenditure can be supported at the Senate unless records have been cooked. And I think that's a position we need to be taking because if all these expenditure could not be supported at that point, why should we be subjected to going through vouchers at this point in time? So I'm just going to ask the Auditor General whether in preparation for this meeting under rentals of produced assets, did the entity provide for audit verification the lease agreements and invoices to support the expenditure of 4.7 million? Chair, they were not able to produce uh, these agreements for all, but they were able to produce this agreement for uh, three out of 35. This is office, uh, offices acquired by for MCAs at the uh, uh, ward level. That's ward offices. Why are they in the executive report and not in the county assembly? I think uh, the ones who are paying for their, 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 their rent. Governor? You've been a speaker, now you're a governor. You know. The, is, was executive paying, was executive, what, what is it, this rent of 4.75 million? Can it be justified? Or we just say, Pesa y Mekulwa, and we give the work to ESCC? Oh, okay. Um, uh, chair, sorry. It's actually not the MCA's offices, because those we wouldn't pay. Those would be paid for by the county assembly. However, it is the sub-county offices that are ours, that are the executives. So in that case, what is the difficulty of providing a lease to support the expenditure of 4.7 million? How do you pay rent without a lease for government offices? Chair, I'm also just as... Is that uh, information somewhere, or...? Um... Uh, Chair, from our response, yes, we have since, it has since been provided. Auditor General? As I said, Chair, they only provided for three out of 35. We have enough provisions of law to cause investigations and uh, possible prosecution for this kind of action under the Public Audit Act under the PFM Act. Uh, I think uh, if, if they couldn't justify this at the time of audit, and today they have only uh, produced three, uh, let us make the necessary recommendations for investigation and prosecution. On insurance costs. Chair, I just wanted to know whether chief officers were there then. No, they're different. No, uh, Senator, so, sorry, through the chair. No, because this was before us. Yeah. 
so the current officers were not in the office then? No, they were not. Yeah, because, I mean, it's... Uh, Are those it's... officers occupied right now? The ones that have queries? Yes, they are. And they are how, no are you paying? how are you paying if the leases are not available? Uh, so over time, uh, Chair and Senators, what we have done is constructed a lot of those offices, the sub-county offices. So we are no longer leasing a lot of offices. So we still have sub-county offices, but not leased. Yeah, but in this period, there, there were ward offices leased, 4.7 yeah. million was paid, mm -hmm. and the Auditor General can only see lease agreements with respect to three. Out of 39, which ones are you still using? So, sorry, sorry, uh, Chair. One of these, the, the biggest one, the biggest amount here goes to the governor's office that was here, used by the former governor at Delta House. And I do see a lease by Knight Frank at the amount of 1 million, 1 million, 100. Sorry. Auditor, is, is that one of Page the three? 33. It's one of them. That's one of them. So that's it still does not, explain, okay. it does not explain the full amount. Okay. So I think let's allow the investigative authorities okay. to pursue this because there's nothing we can do here as a Senate. Let's move to insurance costs. Chair, I think my question is not answered. Eh? I'm asking, are you still occupying those offices or you've given them out currently? Because that is important. If you continue paying for the offices that you don't have leases, then it becomes also illegal. I don't know whether that has been verified. Oh, well, for sure, I can tell you, as the current governor, I'm not occupying the Nairobi governor's office. But we shall verify uh, the others, because as I said, most of them have moved over to what we've constructed. But we shall look to make sure that we don't have any that are leased without the proper documentation going forward. OK, let's proceed on insurance costs. 42 million was incurred on insurance for 227 vehicles, but policy documents and insurance certificates were not provided. Have those been provided, Auditor General? Chair, they provided the, the policy documents, uh, but they did not, uh, the valuation was provided for the current year, 2023 2024. The previous years, they were not valuing the vehicles before they insure. They used to use the original cost to replace their premium. So, so you find that a vehicle that is four or five years and you are using uh, the, the, the cost, the premiums are overstated. And uh, from the policy documents, are you able to confirm that the 42 million was paid for that service? Yes, they were paid for it. Okay. So then uh, what you just need to do is tighten, making sure that you've got a better approach towards managing your assets. We'll take note of that. On insurance, uh, Governor, have you rectified, you used, uh, you know, all of us paid for premiums for our uh, houses, our cars, and many things. Uh, do you now use the current valuation to, to get the correct premium? Yes, through the chair, uh, that those, those are some of the things that we put in place to tighten these issues. Mm -hmm. So last year, while in office, we did not pay for insurance before we actually first, uh, what is the word? Valuation. We had a valuation for all our vehicles first before we even floated uh, for the insurance. Okay, we proceed to routine maintenance of vehicles and other transport equipment. Again, issues of documentation. It's either supported or not. Auditor General? Uh, Chair, here, here is a case where repairs on motor vehicles is done without inspection reports. What is required is that after the, when the vehicle is required in, 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 a repair, there should be a driver's report of the defects. Then the vehicle is taken to public, uh, uh, a minister of public works for a mechanic court to write a report on the, rep the repairs required. Then the vehicle goes for repair, and then it comes back to the same mechanic to give another report that actually what was supposed to be done has been done. But this one, this one never used to happen. So you are told the vehicle is repaired and it comes back. You are not sure whether the required this repair work was done. But that's a process. There's also the issue of materiality where the cost jumped from 40 million to 727 million? Uh, 
that is another case in chair. Uh, it's a huge, uh, huge change. Uh, Governor, how, how was that justified? The jump from 40 million to 727 million on motor vehicle repair. 727 million really can get you, um, what, 100 vehicles yeah. at 7 million each. Yes. Uh, sorry, oh, sorry, Chair, I was waiting. Justify a 1,701% uh, jump in repair and maintenance of vehicles. Chair, just as you and everybody in the room, I was also just as surprised and have not been able to ascertain how that happened. But again, as we said, this was before we came into office. So we have this is not an area been able that requires investigation. I believe. Fine. And, and one of the things now that I have done is now we have operational we are operationalizing our own county garage. Because I think well, this is one of the areas where things were happening without being having some tight um, processes in place. Well, I think let's leave it at that. If you mm. can't explain it, the Auditor General can't understand it, then ESCC. Uh, perhaps might have better tools. Again, another matter of unsupported transfers. A lot of things unsupported, and that just means documentation. Uh, 5.1, the emergency fund, the variance of 15 million. Auditor General, does it still stand? Or it has been explained? This has been explained. It's agreed. Fine. Uh, on facility improvement fund, Earlier on, the governor averred that uh, there, is, there was an act, and this audit query says that there was no law to support spending at source. Uh, the law was uh, passed later, after the 2022 audit. It was passed after the 2022 audit. Yes. So, guilty as charged, yes. corrected later. Uh, is, uh, is corrected later, but there is still another second issue of 279 million which was on wages, which was not reported, and they did not respond. Governor, what would be a response here? a minute, Chair. Uh, Ch Chair, it looks like um, the, the 279,891,046 uh, may have been paid, because we do have hospitals paying workers using the FIF. So this would have was been paid to the casuals. Was there an FIF law, a county FIF act, yes. during the period of audit? Yes. The reason I say that very confidently is because the county of Nakuru passed it when I was the speaker of the county. Are you, so I know there was. Do you have a copy of that in the supporting annexures? Because that was the that was the main that was the origin of the query. Uh, Chair, I mean, I, I don't even know how to explain this, but we could not find the signed. The reason we didn't attach it is we couldn't find the signed copy from the county attorney's or county secretary's office. But it, it's how does that work? Because I, I uh, the county attorney has just told us about your innovations of build trackers? It's a, that's a new thing, uh, Chair, in the last year or two. But the, I'm talking about prior to 2017, so they may not have um, kept well, if, those... If you don't have it in your possession as a governor, how do you even talk about it? I mean, you asked if there was, and I wasn't going to say there wasn't, because there was. It's just I'm also being yeah, where, upfront. Where is it? Where is the evidence? We can submit. You see, the, the Auditor General tells us it was not there. Even you, you haven't come with it. You are just telling us stories. So what do we go with? You see, this problem has been resolved because the Senate passed an FIF Act. 
So I don't expect any county to have a problem. But we just want to ensure that there's proper accountability for that financial year. Was there a law in place in that financial year? Uh, Chair, can we be given time to submit like, the other documents? Because we, we do not have it, but I do believe there was. Give us the 30 days, and if not, then you can uh, decide. Mr. Chairman, we have been trying to trace a copy. It's actually the FIF regulations of Nakuru that were passed in the first term uh, of devolution. They were made under the main act, that is the Public Finance Management Act and the regulations. We will try to trace a copy. We have not been able to trace a copy, Mr. Chairman, as of today. But what do you do if you can't? First of all, that's that's terribly. If you can't even account for 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 acts, which which uh, w was it gazetted for regulations to come into force? Don't they need to be gazetted? Perhaps uh, the uh, Your chair, I let me have our... On this one, there's, there's an element of laziness in um, uh, just because <laughs> e even if you don't find it, you could even go back to the assembly and look for the vellum. Um, I'm in agreement, chair. I was just going to say maybe the chief officer here who was who has, has some more information on that as well. Yeah, let him just address himself to the existence of the regulations or sure. act, not the story. Uh, it was there for 2014. So, so where is it? Where is the copy? That is an audit query here. That you are spending 1.49 billion, 1.5 billion, without enabling legislation or regulation. Now, all you need to do is to provide us with a copy of the regulation. End of story. Where is it? Um. I think it was gazetted. Who's been the fund administrator? Who's the fund administrator of the FIF? Is it Chief of Officer of Finance? Chief Officer Medical. Yes. You, are the, you are the administrator of the fund? Yes. So how right. are you administering a fund whose regulations you have no visibility over? We, what we have uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a, a copy that's not signed, but I will see uh, the signed copy as well. That was for How are you preparing fund statements if you don't have the regulations? How are you authorizing withdrawals and expenditure on the fund if you can't point at the regulation? What, what instrument are you using? And it's 1.5 billion Kenya shillings. It's not small money. Maybe I will be given more time to, to look for it, the same copy. In the meantime, 1.5 billion spent without a legal framework is a joke. And these are the kind of things that make Senator Mtata look like the next president. Because people think that the counties have become a joke. They become a swamp that needs to be drained. Really, those youngsters, if they had us talking about 1.5 billion spent on the basis of a law which nobody knows and which nobody can produce, we are, we are enraging the youth by our actions and the casual manner in which we, we are approaching uh, our public resources. I think, Governor, you cannot uh, accept that kind of uh, explanation. We cannot accept it. Even you cannot accept it. Everyone has got a responsibility in the county to be a custodian of certain relevant records. If there are invoices and financial records, you know, you go to finance. If there are procurement, you know, the head of procurement. If there are acts that have been signed by the governor, who is supposed to be the custodian in the county? So you, 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 you have a problem that you must fix. This one is new. I am yet to hear a governor here 
say that there's a law that was passed, but we can't trace it. You come across something new every day. But it's not interesting, it is not impressive. Um, we will grant you a request. Please provide us with, um, um, with a copy of the signed act or regulations. I think we are given 30 days for the legal issues. Let's use the same time frame. Otherwise, this one, uh, this is juicy. I think if the public heard that someone was taken to court over 1.5 billion, they will start feeling that uh, ESCC is doing some work. If we can't get that uh, confirmation, we'll just be making recommendations to ESCC on it. But please, let's take our work seriously. I do not think that the gentlemen sitting behind you um, are quacks or pedestrians, but there seems to be some synergy that is missing in your organization. Maybe it was missing then, Right now, you are the team captain. Make sure that the advocates and the doctors are able to talk to the accountants to give rise to financial statements that make sense. Uh, I think this is frustrating, and uh, we are quite uh, disappointed on that. Moving on to 5.3, conditional grants to village polytechnics. Is this one resolved, Otajan? Um, so the problem was the overpayments and the underpayments? Underpayments. Uh, they received the 63 million that was to be shared among the village polytechnics and the bus students in that polytechnic. Some were given higher than the, uh, the rates and others were given below the, uh, below the rates. Was there a loss of public funds in this? No. So yes. it was just uh, the issue of policy? Misallocation and misfunding. Because of time, we'll take the written response on that. 5.4? 5.4 is capital grant spent. This is money they spend on uh, 27 million budgets of sports kit, which was shared without a, a clear criteria of identifying the beneficiaries. Um, oh, Governor, what was your response on that? Are you, are you able to account for the 27 million it's in terms of sports? Sports kitty and empowerment items. Was there a response in your file which you can refer to? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, sorry. On chair, we are in agreement with the findings of the auditor and we regret that the criteria for identifying the beneficiaries and the signed distribution list were not provided for audit review. The distribution list has since been provided to the auditors for verification. We have taken note of the auditor's recommendation and we will initiate the process of coming up with the legislation. Auditor General, did you receive a schedule totaling to 27 million? Yes, they provided uh, the list of beneficiaries, but not the criteria. Can you the... confirm the authenticity of that list? Because if it was not ready then, and remember this was a campaign period. Mm. This issue, let us read it alongside issue number 17 mm. on page 19. It's the same story. Can you read donation of business items to the public? Just read it out. Number. Donation of business items to the public. That is under, under lawfulness and effectiveness in use of public resources. Where Items amounting to 187 million, uh, tents, chairs, border border umbrellas, motorbikes, shaving machines, school uniforms, hair dryers, UV gel, public address system, car wash machines, water tanks, welding machines, and milk coolers yes, were donated to members of the public for free. Chair, that is paragraph number 17 on lawfulness. Uh, and effective, effective use of uh, public resources, uh, donations to, uh, of business items to the public, specialized materials and services expended amounting to 1 billion, 419 million, 256 and 54 shillings, as, as disclosed in notified five to the financial statements, include an expenditure amounting to Kenya shillings 187 million, 113,416 in respect of budgets and supply of tents, chairs, border-border umbrellas, border-border, 
umbrellas, motorbike, uh, saving machines, school uniforms, hair, dry, hair dryers, UV gel, public address system, car wash machines, water tanks, welding machines, milking, milk coolers. Uh, the items were donated to members of the public in the county for free. However, the donations were not within the mandate of the county government. This, was this is contrary to the Ford schedule of the constitution. Further, the requisitions criteria of identifying the beneficiaries, evidence of acknowledgement letter of the recipient by the beneficiaries were not provided for audit <coughs> verification. In the circumstance, the management was in breach of the law. Yeah. Okay. So we have just come from 27 million of sports kit and empowerment items. We are now on 187 million of various uh, assorted um, items. Governor, were you able to uh, provide the criteria and um, the beneficiaries uh, list? Um, identification of, um, sorry, so on chair, we're in agreement with the findings of the auditor and would wish to respond that the items procured were budgeted for as part of the ward resource envelope by the members of the county assembly during 2021-22 financial year as part of the youth empowerment. Identification of beneficiaries took place through the selection and vetting committee at the ward level. The membership comprised of ward administrator and representatives from the community. The committee was responsible for setting out the specific guidelines to be followed in the identification of the beneficiaries. Uh, the appendix 17.1. Uh, Governor, we are within the Senate at this time, mm -hmm. fighting for Nakuru to get money, mm -hmm. to build hospitals, mm -hmm. provide water, yeah. transport, mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. Are you convinced from where you sit that the 187 million which you fought for Nakuru to get should have been used in this manner? No. Are you convinced or do you have visibility that the 187 million reached people who deserved to be reached? I can't say with certainty. So Is I it a practice that has continued? No, we are not doing that. No. And is it a coincidence that it was an election year? I am 100% sure it was not a coincidence. Chair, uh, Public Accounts Committee of the Assembly, were you in the Assembly then? Not yet. I not saw yet. this thing, and I knew it was going to cause problems. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that uh, members of County Assembly are not innocent on this. In fact, if they are the ones who are going to oversight this, in your response, I've heard you refer to ward administrators. Mm. What was the role of members of county assembly I guess they in this ward resource envelope budget? I think generally they are patrons, I think, but they can answer. No, no, no. What was their role in this? Uh, that gentleman was not present. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I believe they may have been the ones who identified through public participation, I suppose. What the this youth truth empowerment. about this thing, Governor, which you know, and I see you smiling. These things were given to Ubuntu supporters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's the truth. Completely. <laughs> Completely. So, 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 so some of these things, we just need to call them out. Yes. And you see, the people who are in office then ought to have explained this to the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now it has come before us. We have to deal with it. We cannot cover it up, whether we are members of Ubuntu or not. I passed through Nakuru when I'm going home, and I saw this thing going on. And I was waiting for the Auditor General to report on it. Plus another 27 on sports kit. And you wouldn't get it if you are not supporting uh, a, co a certain coalition. Now, I think we, we shall pronounce ourselves on this. This is not value for money. It's not the right way to utilize public resources. And people must be held accountable for, for it. If, it. if it involves calling those people who are in office and made those decisions, then we will... Chair, so. would it be out of uh, curiosity 
uh, would it be under Department of Finance, not for trade, in then during that regime, and uh, somebody who must have procured and then must have been a chief officer of trade or something. Because it looks like it's more of business items, which means it must have been a domain of trade, trade department. And the person who purchased must have been a chief officer of trade. Yeah, uh, perhaps uh, we will need to direct that investigations be carried out on that particular matter because it's not small money. It's 200, yes, 200 million. 200 million. Yeah, yeah 200 That's million. like uh, two constituencies, CDF. 200 million and look at it from the perspective of how much are you collecting from your markets. So you tax the women in the markets, then you come and buy goods to distribute during elections. And you buy what we call UV gel. Yeah, that was to get the ladies work in salons to support the candidates. But I thought Nakuru is not too hot until you need to uh, be protected from the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think this one, uh, this one is not acceptable and it is not the right way to use public resources. And even if you want to incentivize and to bring people to our side, let's do things that are structured, things that fall within the domain of devolved governments, not this thing of handouts using public resources. If you want to do handouts of this nature, uh, build a foundation or fundraise, but you can't use, we, we, th this cannot be acceptable in any setting. Honorable members, we'll move a bit faster on uh, accuracy of KDSP. Uh, Auditor General, is that still an issue? Uh, still outstanding. Um, is this again some of the uh, um, accounting problems? Uh, it's accounting. <coughs> what about the expenditure of 12 million for consultant services under KDSP? Was that supported? Second paragraph. Not, not yet supported. Governor, if we just narrow down to the 12 million, is there any supporting uh, documentation for the expenditure? Accuracy of KDSP? 5.5. 12, 12 million 1,150 was paid to various firms for consultancy services. Procurement documents were not presented. Terms of reference of services could not be confirmed. Can we just deal with the 12 million? Do we have 